Okay, a lot of people on the range and firearms instructors, what they'll say is if you have a malfunction that you should always tap and rack, okay? But the problem with that is you need to check first to find out what the problem is. Very first thing you need to do is check because if I would tap and rack this double feet, it wouldn't do any good. So if I check the weapon first to find out what kind of malfunction it is, which takes an instant of a second, I can find that I have a double feed here. Now a double feed on this kind of firearm here, you can't just rip the magazine out because that ain't gonna work on this particular firearm. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna move the slide back and with your index finger, you're gonna push that bullet that's on the top of the magazine back so that you can get the mag release pushed shake it and then load another round. I'll show you slow motion here. So what you're going to do is you're going to come back with the slide. Notice that the, the bullet is uh, forward. So I'm going to take my index finger, push it in. Now I can hit the mag release and it slides right out. Okay. Shake. Okay. Put in the new magazine and I'm ready to go. Okay. So I'm going to do that quicker so I can show you, uh, so I can show you what's going on here. So we're going to create a double feed and I'm going to show you how to clear a double feed with this firearm. Another thing I have to say about uh, ripping out magazines, although some people like to do it, you have to remember something. Even if you rip out a magazine like this and the bullets like this, what can happen is you notice right here, uh, the tension that's in this area, what could happen over time if you keep doing the malfunction drills and you keep ripping that magazine out, this will flare open and then you'll have a malfunction in the magazine. You don't want that. So what you've seen me do when I cleared the malfunction is I checked the weapon, I pulled the slide back, but the bullet was forward. So I'm taking my index finger, I'm pushing it back where it belongs, hitting the mag release, and then the magazine comes out, and then I use this one to pretend that this is my new magazine. Okay, because I just had a double feed or whatever. Or the old magazine, if it had ammo in it. Now, if this didn't have ammo in it, I would have to go for another magazine. So let me show you what that looks like uh, quickly. So we're going to create a double feed. we got the slide locked open. We're going to put a bullet in, and then we're going to put the magazine in. But when we put the magazine in, you have to make sure it's like this, where you're feeling for the tip of that bullet there. Okay, I just racked around. Now notice notice what I have here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it quickly so you can understand what I'm saying, that you can't just go tap rack without looking. That is something you can't do. That'll get you killed, okay? If this is the only mag you have left, you have to check the weapon. It's the very first thing you do. So here's what you do. Check. And you're back and ready to go. So that's what you want to do. And you want to practice that quite a bit. You want to practice that quite a bit. Um, it's probably something that's not going to ever happen to you. But if you practice it, say, like a few times a month, Usually you can stay proficient. Now, with the slide on most firearms, you got to be careful that you don't just let it ram forward. So I'm going to do it again and show you how, how you should do it. Rather than, rather than racking it like this, just kind of really gently put it forward like that so you don't mess up your snap caps. So once again, here I am. I've got a malfunction. Okay, I'm not going to tap and rack, okay? I'm not going to tap and rack because that's taken up all the time. I'm going to check. Oh, I got a double feed. There we go. So that's how it works. Um, the, reason, the reason why you can't just tap and rack is because if you tap and rack, even though that's the normal thing that people do with firearms, they automatically just instinctively tap and rack. If you do have a double feed, what happens is now you've wasted time because you didn't know it was a double feed and then you have to check anyway because if I tap and rack and nothing happens, let me show you. If I tap and rack and nothing happens, 
then I still have to do it anyway. So why not check first? Why not check first, okay? So let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, firearms instructors, and this is popular among schools and stuff like that. And rather than telling you to check like the Israeli method, where you check first and then tap, rack, what they want you to do is they want you to tap and rack. Nothing happened, okay? Tap, rack. Nothing happened. Why? Because I didn't look. So now I find out I have a double feed and that tap and rack was an extra step. So now I have to remedy the situation by clearing that double feed because now I know that I have a double feed. Whereas before I didn't know. So if I'm, let me show you something here. Once again, a lot of people don't understand simple concepts, so I'm going to go through it one more time for you. Rather than just tap and rack, you never want to just tap and rack. You want to check. You want to check the firearm first. Okay. Okay, once again, the traditional method is tap, rack. Okay, nothing happened, okay? So now I just wasted my time on that movement when I could have just checked like that. This is faster than tap, rack, and then check again. If I check first, I go, well, I got a double feed. Get this thing back in order. Okay? And I'm ready again. See that clearing that double feed. And I usually can clear it a lot faster than when I'm watching through my camera. But I'm watching through my camera because I only got a certain distance here I can... I can use the camera because it's not up high enough. I got to put it up higher so I can demonstrate for you. So anyway, let me do it one more time just to show you what I'm talking about. Okay, we create a double feed. We create a double feed. Your instinct is to tap rack. Okay, now you got a problem. Now you're going to check, okay? That's the long way of doing it. Wouldn't it be simpler? When you have a malfunction, the very first thing you do is check. So here I am. Okay, I'm not going to tap and rack. I'm going to check first. There we go. I'm back in business. Okay. Now, if somebody else would have done it, what they would have done is they would have done a tap a tap and a rack, and they would have got hesitating and confused and not check. But you want to check first. That's the very first thing you do is you check. It doesn't matter which firearm it is. It could be this one. It could be a Glock or anything. You want to, First thing you want to do is check. See what the problem is. Okay? Because if you have a double feed, you know, very rare on a lot of firearms, but if you have a double feed, you could be in a lot of trouble because now you have to do two things instead of one thing, okay? Now you have to, your tapping and racking was the extra step that was unnecessary had you checked and then cleared the double feed. So once again, once again, I'll show you. Okay, you're on the range. Tap, rack, nothing happens, okay? And some guys will say, keep going like this. Keep going like this. Well, nothing's happening. So that's the wrong way to do it. The wrong way to do it is to tap and rack and instinct. Your instinct should be check. There we go. I cleared that firearm. So somebody that uh, doesn't do it this way where they check is going to have problems because once they tap and rack and find out that they have a problem because they haven't got it in their memory and have done it over and over again, what they're going to do is they're going to tap and rack and they're going to get startled and confused and they're going to hesitate for a few seconds and they go, oh, okay, I got to clear that double feed. You know what I mean? So it's better if you, if you just do things the same way every time 
do things the same way every single time. So that this pistol, for instance, this is the way it's got to be done. This 32 ACP here. This is an FEG 32 ACP. And once again, we're going to create a double feed, and I'm going to show you how I do it. Somebody on the range, they'd be go tap, rack, 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 rack. Oh, I got a double feed, okay? That's not me, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to check, okay? I'm going to check. I'm back in business. So that's what I'm talking about. That's a double feed clearing right there. Most people can't clear double feeds that well because they never practice double feeds. But once again, when you're practicing a double feed, make sure don't let that slide ram real hard. Just kind of let it go real gentle on both of them rounds so that your snap caps won't get too damaged. This one lost the center, uh, but I filled it up with material and stuff, but I usually don't use this for fire. I use this one for fire right here. Now, the thing you have to understand about 32 ACP snap caps is that the rim, it's a semi-rimmed case, which means there's just a little bit of rim up there. So some people will put it in their 327 Magnum revolvers and uh, 32 H&R or whatever. There's just a little bit of catch right there, which means that over time, the 32 ACP rim on the snap caps gets worn down right here, and you'll have problem ejecting. So what you have to do is replace your dummy rounds. The 32s, you have to replace more because they don't have much for the extractor to catch on, whereas other ones have a lot of uh, surface area for the extractor to catch on, like 9mm, 45, and all the other calibers. It's usually 32 that's the tough one because you want all the rim that you can have for that extractor. So don't think that you have a problem with the extractor, okay, and the firearm. It's most likely not the extractor on your dummy rounds. It's probably your, uh, it's probably the dummy round itself being worn out right here. So, and then obviously you want to try live ammo to make sure that the extractor, you know, is in good condition and that it's not the extractor. So, but anyway, thanks for watching, you guys.